Are you a man looking for an intensive program to help you overcome your sexually addictive behaviors? Gateway to Freedom is your answer. Gateway to Freedom is a three-day intensive workshop for men seeking to overcome sexually addictive behaviors. Whether married, single, or divorced, Gateway to Freedom will help men regain hope for a new life of purity and real contentment. The workshop is conducted by experts in the field of sexual addiction recovery. Your experts have over 35 years of combined experience. Read testimonials of workshop alumni at gatewaymen.com. Get all the info and register online at gatewaymen.com or call 1-800-49-PURITY. Hi, my name is Jonathan, and I'm the founder of the Gateway to Freedom Workshop. I want to personally invite you to be part of our next workshop coming up October 2nd through the 4th in Pennsylvania. So call us today at 1-800-49-PURITY or visit gatewaymen.com. Welcome to Pure Sex Radio, training men, educating women. Are you ready to get real and start living each day in purity? This dynamic program is designed to educate, encourage, and equip listeners with the tools necessary for living a life of sexual purity. Pure Sex Radio brings you the best in mobile talk radio. Listen to real life struggles, learn how to overcome lust, pornography, and sex addiction, and get serious about purity. Your hosts for Pure Sex Radio are Jonathan Doherty and Stephen Cervantes. Jonathan is the director of Be Broken Ministries and founder of the Gateway to Freedom Workshop for Men. Stephen is the founder of the Hope Counseling Center. Visit us online at puresexradio.com. And now, please welcome Jonathan and Stephen on Pure Sex Radio. Good day, radio listeners. Welcome to this week's edition of the Pure Sex Radio Broadcast. We're glad to have you here with us. My name is Jonathan. I'm here with Stephen. Stephen, how are you doing today? Very well. Thank you, Jonathan. Good. Well, we are excited about another broadcast to be able to share with you this week about how we, uh, on this program, train men and educate women in the area of biblical sexuality. And I want to let you know about our three-day intensive workshop for men. It's called Gateway to Freedom. And we do these periodically throughout the year. And in fact, this week's broadcast, we're going to be sharing some insights from guys that have gone to the workshop. And it's just a great catalyst for uh, getting to the depths of what's broken and how to um, really move forward in hope and healing. So no matter where you are on the journey, whether it's day one and you're saying, I just now am admitting my struggle Um, or maybe you're a ways down the road, maybe several years down the road, and you feel stuck, the Gateway to Freedom workshop can be very, very helpful in moving you forward. So to learn more about Gateway to Freedom, simply go to gatewaymen.com. Again, that's gatewaymen.com. So, Stephen, why don't you share with us kind of where we're going to go this week and kind of how you got some of the information that we are going to be dealing with? Well, the men of, that attend our workshop are so gracious. We ask them if it's okay to share some of their ideas, uh, and they all say yes. Uh, if it's going to bless my brother, yes. If it's going to strengthen a man, yes. If it will help, yes. Take what I'm learning back and share it, because we're one community, all connected together, all over the world, um, nurturing, building, training men and it's exciting. Mm-hmm. And so the guys that attend say, I'm in. You can use my stuff. We never use a name. We never tell anyone's story. But ideas and insights and valuable statements, we have permission to use. So the first guy said this. He said, this is what I would pass on. Please don't ignore that this is a battle, a battle for your very life. Uh, And if you're not all in, 
you will fail. Because this is an all or nothing battle. And he said, I don't know how to paint this picture, but maybe it's like climbing a very tall mountain. You get up, you go up, you get tired, you sit down. You might hit the gravel and slide back a bit. You get up, you go forward. And so all in, a real battle for your life and soul, a tall, long journey. Yeah, and I would sort of, I would sort of separate these metaphors out a little bit because the idea of battle, when I think about that, or let me ask you this, what do you, what do you think about when you think about a battle? Do you think about um, an individual or do you think about an army? Uh, the first thought is a back and forth. Whatever it is, mm-hmm. this side wins and that side wins, and this side counters, and this guy sends over, and this we we are not finished. We're not starting. We are in the battle. Yeah, yeah. So I, I guess there's a lot of different ways you could look at it. You could think of it like, you know, one one image that I get is like, okay, two guys engage in sword play. Okay, and so there's the, there's that kind of battle. Then you've got the battle of let's say two armies meeting in the valley. Uh, you know, to 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 fire, you know, to fight mm-hmm. it out. And then I think there's also what we might call the internal battle. So it's kind of like you've got individual, you've got maybe a pair, and then you've got armies. <laughs> and it's kind of like, don't you think those yeah. are good pictures? Because yeah. sometimes we get too narrow, narrow-minded narrow when we think of a battle, mm-hmm. where, we, where we either think of it as only this army, and so therefore... I need to collect all these guys on my team and on my army to help me charge against this. And, okay, there's truth to that. You need to be involved in a group. You need to be connected with other guys. But then some people might ignore that, and they might say, listen, it's just all about what's going on inside of me. I just need to get what's inside of me ordered out. But you're saying and, all of these are I'm true. I'm saying all of these things are true. There is a, there's an individual internal battle. Yes. There are some times where it's like we are fighting one particular thing in our being. Mm. Like I'm fighting shame, right? I'm fighting shame. So I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm got my sword up and I'm fighting that shame. And then there's other times where it's like your whole life. Okay, I, I need... I need a whole army with me. Think about all the men in the church, right? Exactly. We, why do we go to church? Because we're trying to battle against evil and wrong and false teachings. So when this says, you know, to be all in, I think you got to be all in in all those areas. Mm, that's good. And sometimes guys go, oh, I'm all in. I'm going to fix, I'm going to get my internal self all in order. And it's like, well, hey, what guys are you connected with in terms of accountability and support and, and oh, challenge? Or I'm going to show up to the big battle, but privately I'm losing. Exactly, right? yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'll stand on the back lines of the of the, the battlefield. But, I th- but also I think this idea of, of climbing a mountain. You know, we've, we've talked about this before um, when it pertains to the journey and how sometimes guys have this idea of it's all or nothing in the sense that if I have given, let's say, uh, a week of sexual integrity, if I've, if I've held the line for a week, if I've, if I've fought victoriously for a week, but then on day eight I stumble and I fall, it's as if I've erased mm. the week that was fought for and won. And I like the way you've put it before. It's like, no, 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 those days count. And if you think about it like climbing a tall mountain, if you get 100 feet up the mountain and you slip five feet down the mountain, must you go to the bottom of the mountain and start all over again? Mm. And so the idea to me of all in is saying, even when you slip, you're still, you're still on the mountain. You're still in the army. Yeah, you're, you're still, yes. You know, if you got... If you got winged when you're on the battlefield, do your do your army mates look at you and say, "Well, you're not part of the army anymore." Mm. No, no, they 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 rally around you, right? And they say, "No, because you're part of the army, our, our, we're we're going to take care of you and we're going to yeah. help you." And if you've slipped down the mountain, does the mountain look at you and say, "You failed five feet. You better go to the bottom of me and start"? No, it's like it's not, it doesn't have a say in it. You're all in. You're still on the mountain. Mm. You're still moving forward. Does that make sense? That's good. That's a great picture because it's at all levels, right? All in. Part of you can't be in and half of you out. Then you're still battling you. Mm -hmm. So the next gentleman said, you have to stand up temptation. You have to stand up to temptation. You will be tempted. Temptation will happen. You have to find a way 
to let the temptation pass. Mm. Right? We live in this culture. Things are presented all the time. There's no avoiding it. How do you let temptation pass? And he said it's almost like you have a choice. Run to the dark side and play with temptation a run to the spirit, the very spirit of God, and do a spiritual thing when evil rises and whispers, come over here, then do a God-seeking, searching, running, grabbing thing. Well, and this reminds me of a—I've been reading through uh, Mere Christianity again by C.S. Lewis, and it, it this statement reminds me of what this looks like to— uh, stand up to temptation and how, how C.S. Lewis put it. So I'm going to read a little bit from his his book, Mere Christianity. He says, Only those who try to resist temptation know how strong it is. After all, you find out the strength of the German army by fighting against it, not by giving in. You find out the strength of a wind by trying to walk against it, not by lying down. A man who gives in to temptation after five minutes simply does not know what it would have been like an hour later. And so I think he's saying there is about you don't know how strong temptation is until you stand against it. And what I what I like about the, him, this guy saying you know let temptation pass is the idea of you stand against it and then you stand against it and you keep standing against it and you realize a lot of times it comes in waves. Yes. And we give up too early. We give mm. in too early. And sometimes we don't realize. I would also, I, I would also turn the C.S. Lewis statement a little bit and say, sometimes we don't realize the power of God against temptation unless we stand in it. In His power. In His power. Yeah. Right. It's like because we give in in five minutes to the temptation, we don't realize. You know what? An hour later, if we had stood, we might realize that the power of God was more than sufficient to stand against that temptation. But because we gave in in five minutes. Right. We never realized and it's, that. It's almost like weightlifting or something, right? You lift up the barbells too heavy, I'm going to go home. Right. No, no, it's too hard. <laughs> but you push and you and you develop muscles and you can take more, right? And it's, it's greater truth to work through this, right, mm-hmm. and stand than it is to, to melt under temptation, to give in and to say, oh, well, it's hard. And the thing is, is this is where a lot of Christian men especially have, have deceived themselves. They, they have deceived themselves into thinking that they can become mighty, godly men apart from standing against temptation. In other words, they think, I can keep going down this road where I go to church and I fill my head with all these truths. I can even, you know what, I can even read guys like C.S. Lewis, and I can get all this great information. I've got all the arguments in my head, and I've got all this knowledge, and yet I'm continuing to go over here and, and give in over and over and over again to temptation, and making the assumption that because I'm consuming all of this Christian information, even the Word of God, that simply consuming the information is actually making me into a godly man of character, when in fact, that comes through standing against temptation. Wouldn't you, you know, say this that's... is really an interesting thought, because that means we're tempted every day mm-hmm. by different things, and and all of that is designed for the strengthening of yourself, not the breaking down, not the falling down, to remind yourself, oh, this is temptation. Yeah. I know how temptation goes. I know temptation's game. I know where temptation ends up. And all I have to do is find a way for t- to remind it, speak to it, or walk past it, but just survive and keep going and don't buy in the little side game that temptation wants to play. Because let me ask you this, if you're willing to answer this. If you were to to think about your own life— and think through through your life and say, okay, let's look at the times in my life where I felt like I was growing the most in terms of feeling like, man, I'm I'm growing in my faith. I'm growing in my uh, maturity. Were those times where you were simply filling your head with a lot of knowledge? No. Or were those times that you were facing a lot of challenges? Battling through. Yeah. And then you grow muscles and insight and strength, and right? So that leads into the next statement. This battle, this journey we're on, has a lot of tension involved. Mm. It's stressful. You get tired. You get worn out. And I think that that sometimes is part of the reason for giving in to temptation. Mm -hmm. 
It's very stressful. Life is stressful. And temptation says, hey, I've got some relief over here. Got an easier path. Why are you going down the hard road? Don't you need some comfort? Right? And so managing your emotional self and not using temptation to get through difficult times, right? Well, and, you know, I think about the passage in James 1 where it says, consider joy when you face trials of many kinds. Really, that, that we have misinterpreted or misunderstood that term trials to mean like, oh, you know what, if my car breaks down and I just consider it joy. No, no, that is actually dealing exactly with what we're talking about here. Those trials in life are the temptations that's the things that's pushing against us. And he said, consider it joy. Why? Because the kind of things that it produces in you, the kind of character that it will produce in you when you persevere. And so I think there is a tension here. And think about it. If we, What might happen, Stephen, if we changed our perspective on what temptation offers to us? And, and let me try to frame it up this way. You know, we think temptation... And, and in a way it is, it's offering us this alternative, right? It's saying, hey, go over here right. and do this thing. What if we reframed it in our minds and says every single time temptation comes to us, we have an opportunity to grow in character. Every temptation is an opportunity to build character. What might happen if we just reframed it that way? So when you, you know, next time you and I have that twinge of temptation, whatever it is, any kind of temptation, instead of saying, oh, man, I, I, I got I to gotta wrestle against instead of we might say, hey, here's another opportunity to grow in character. What am I going to do here? Am I going to persevere? Am I going to press against good. it? Have you ever noticed how uh, when you're battling something that you can claim a truth and it works really powerfully for a few days and then it sort of seems to lose its power mm-hmm. and you find some other good thing and you you repeat that. I don't know if people just realize you just gave them a tool for the week. Mm-hmm. This is the challenge for the week. When temptation comes, speak to the temptation. You're an opportunity for for me to build character and I choose character. Mm-hmm. Right? This is a great line. You are not temptation. You're an opportunity to build character. I choose character. Just one day at a time. Mm-hmm. Just use a statement like that. Some people use a scripture or, or, or a vision or something. This is a great tool for someone to use. And the good news is that we're told in the Word that that brings joy. Right? Consider it joy. And not because the temptation is fun or pleasant, mm. but because what... What the enemy wants to bring to you to destroy you is the very thing that God can use to grow you. Mm. So he can take even the temptation. You sound real smart now, John. Well, I mean, I'm th- yeah, I'm getting on a roll, right? <laughs> this I, is good. I think, you know, so many times we, we look at temptation in the wrong way. We look at it as like, because it does appeal to our flesh, and there's, a, there's, a, there's always a pleasure enticement to it. But if we could see that, that where that leads, which is death and discontent, and instead say, wait a second, God can take this very thing that is trying to get me away from him and use it as a tool to grow me and, mm. and mature me. That that could make a huge difference. And, and this, this gentleman went on to say, when temptation comes, I say to myself, I choose life. That's good. I choose life, not false life, fake life, near life. I choose life. And so I want to stay in relationship to my God and to his truths. And so I choose life. That's good. And so this is interesting because this is like coming down to a talk about temptation and what's the point of temptation and what's the value of temptation because it's it's got to be traumatizing. Well, it could be. Or it could be strengthening, right? This is a good well, and dialogue. That's, and that's where I think the deception comes in over the long haul. Think about it. If you've given in, if you've given in, kind of that C.S. Lewis quote saying, Lewis, we don't know the strength until we've pressed against it. And so, um, but we also don't know the power of God until we've stood in it. And so I think the deception that a lot of guys have is if, is if they've given in over and over and over again to temptation, they come to believe that they cannot resist temptation. In other words, they're unable to to resist temptation, which then, what is that doing? That's essentially reducing the power of God. That's saying, well, listen, even as a Christian, I mean, even even though God says he's within me, says he, he always promises a way of escape for every single temptation, well, God must be impotent. I mean, he, he must not have enough power. Mm. And so we yes. have to be reminded, we don't have to be afraid of temptation. You know, there's no temptation 
that in Christ we can't say no to. And so if you start reframing it of like, hey, opportunity to grow in character, and it just, the temptation itself might lose its sense of awesomeness. Because when temptations come, if you've been giving in to them over and over again, they seem like they're gigantic, they're enormous, they're bigger than you can handle. But when you start to kind of get perspective and put things in perspective and realize every single temptation God promises that he has a way of a way out, then maybe God is more powerful than temptation, and I don't have to be afraid of it. Mm. So we're going down making comments here, and the next comment that a gentleman made was, I'm growing deeper in my relationships, and to do that, I have to hide less. Mm -hmm. And even though this doesn't make sense to some people, I'm on a freedom walk because I want to be free, and I don't want to hide and I want to be real in my relationships. Mm. What do you think? I, I think this is, he's right on here. I love the idea of how he's connected, growing deeper in his relationships with both not hiding and pursuing freedom. You know, too many times the deception of sexual lust and temptation causes a man to believe that freedom is to be disconnected from his wife. Oh, if I could just get out from under this marriage, if I could have whatever I want, if I could have any woman I want, and it's a false idea of freedom, meaning I get to do whatever I want whenever I want. What this guy is realizing, you know what, this freedom walk is about me not hiding and becoming more deeply connected to my wife, not the other way around. He's realizing that's freedom, is actually being more deeply invested and deeply connected to my wife. And... And if I can say it this way, becoming one with her. That's, That's real freedom. Hmm. So our next statement is, you know what? I find reality boring a lot of the time. <laughs> and fantasy is so much fun. I'm having to battle that. And I've noticed that I used to just stare into space for long periods of time, get lost in conversations and go up into my head and entertain myself. But now I'm trying something new. Um, I'm talking through issues with my wife. I'm trying to stay present more. And I've noticed that breaking down is this slippery slope involving zoning out and planning and going away. You know, that idea of slippery slope, it makes me think of that song uh, from a maybe in, in recent years that Casting Crowns did um, called Slow Fade. And the idea that, you know, you don't get to a point of having an affair, breaking up your family, or destroying your life overnight. It's a slow fade. It's little mm -hmm. things here and there, little compromises, little... And so I'm glad he's recognizing that. But I, I actually wouldn't disagree with this guy in how he juxtaposes reality against fantasy. I would actually say I agree with that. Reality is is boring compared to fantasy because it's slow it's slow it's like mm -hmm. slow time compared to fast time or something yeah now what i would say though is that the substance of reality and fantasy are very very different so while you may look at what reality looks like and what fantasy looks like and come to the conclusion yeah reality is boring fantasy is fun the problem is the substance of them is very different the substance of reality is is deep. It's tangible. It's rich. It's um, it's made of something. Whereas fantasy is completely a facade. It's oh, it's right. it's a it's mist. Up, it's right. just a, it's just an illusion. So while again on its appearance, yeah, fantasy man is thrilling. It's fun. Reality boring. If you actually reach out to them, only in reality is there anything to actually grab, anything of real substance. Mm. So that's why, even though reality may be boring, it's kind of like when I said in a previous broadcast, the difference between, you know, the cotton candy and the vegetables. Okay, reality is vegetables. <laughs> Fantasy is cotton candy, you know. Fantasy gives you that quick rush and everything, but it is not good for you. It, it mm. evaporates quickly. You know, reality, well, you know, it's like vegetables. It is actually good for you. It's the only place you can find the, the good stuff, so to speak. So the next comment goes like this. If I do not talk out an issue, I've noticed it can become an inner battle. Mm -hmm. so, so what I need to do is practice every day, opening up, talking, trying to talk through stress and grief and loneliness 
which sometimes I'm even oblivious to what I'm feeling, but I have to talk through my issues so they don't become a battle that then I need to salve with some feel good and have to practice every day this process of talking. And my goal is to live in the light, not in the dark place. Now, help our, our, our male listeners especially understand this because I, can, I, I know some of them are probably breathing into a sack right now <laughs> because they're saying, wait a second, talk out an issue. And, and in their minds, they're thinking, this looks like I'm sitting across from my wife, holding her hands, looking into her eyes. And for the next two hours, I got to share the, <laughs> the depths of my heart. So help a guy see that. And listen that, to her share for two hours yeah, the depths of her heart. Right? Help a guy see what this looks like in a practical level, when, especially when he says, I got to practice this every day. Is this something that's, that's like that? Or is it something where it's like, listen, I'm just learning how to carve out time and space where I can, I can unload some things that maybe happened during my day, some things that I'm feeling. How does this work? Because I think a lot of guys are going to take this to an extreme and go, I can't do that. And then yeah. they just bail out completely. No, that's good. We have to make this practical. I thought we just talked and <laughs> and they got cured out there. That doesn't work that way. So, no, I appreciate you're slowing it down because remember what, what's been said before. Hiding mm. is where the skill set is, not staying present. And so most guys don't even know what they feel. They just know it's an ugly feeling, so get relief. But you have to sort of be kind to your body and kind to yourself and start to use some terms to define what it is you're feeling. Are you stressed? Are you sad, lonely, angry, hurting, rejected? So, so one, you've got to slow down. Then you've got to put words to it and sort of feel comfortable saying those words. Then you have to set your wife up to say, could I just talk a few minutes and you just let me talk? And I don't need too much except a little comfort because we don't have this ritual. Mm -hmm. And then the whole idea of pressing in and trying the conversation and wives stay calm while he practices. It's funny. It's almost like a first grader reading. Mm -hmm. Right. And that's why I was, I wanted you to unpack it a little bit more because I think the, the, the key to this to me is the idea of practicing every day. It, it, too many guys, they, they get solution-oriented when they think about mm. dealing with their addiction or recovery or anything like that. And they try to pack everything into a very short time frame. So they're like, okay, this means i got to have these long conversations. we got to get to this. we got to get to the bottom of it and move on with our lives. Mm. Instead, if you realize this is about you learning how to connect every day. How can you unpack every day? And if you have that mindset, then you realize you don't have to get it all solved right now. You don't have to get it all out right now. Try well, to, that's true. Try yeah. to just bring a little bit out every day. Just get in the yeah, pattern of being able to talk. excellent to go home and say, let me have, hear some thoughts I thought today. Mm -hmm. I mean, guys that don't know how to talk, they do not know how to talk. And, I mean, they zone out. She starts talking. They zone out. She says, well, what have you been thinking? He says, nothing. Mm -hmm. I mean, look, you've lived all day. And you haven't had any thoughts at all. And it's just that it's not practiced back and forth, the dialogue. So I appreciate your slowing this down because I think it's easy to say it. I think it's incredibly difficult if you're hiding and you don't want to be known. You don't talk, right? If you're better at zoning out, then you have the dialogue in your head. And probably you were untrained in relationships and dialogue and the comfort of language and nurturing so that you just sort of deer in the headlights the thing when it happens. And I would say to the wives out there, as best as possible, be patient with your husband if he starts to uh, engage this idea of talking every day because it probably will be very uncomfortable for him. It will be very disjointed. It probably won't be something that will come naturally to him as it does to you. And so there's a great sense of patience. If you want your you know, husband to talk more, then when he does start talking, just let him say whatever he needs to say and, and be careful about, you know, correcting and, you know, shutting him down and all that because he'll he'll very easily go back into his shell if you do that. Well, we are out of time, and we're glad that you've been with us. And if you would like some more help on your journey, please contact us. And we look forward to having you back here again next week on the Pure Sex Radio broadcast. Pure Sex Radio is paid for by Be Broken Ministries. Visit us online at puresexradio.com. dot